Lagos, Nigeria, an energetic city that's choking under a cloud of pollution that drags down commerce and drives up healthcare costs. The poor suffer the most. A whole community has sprung up on this mountain of garbage within the city limits. They scavenge for items to sell. My name is Madame Stella. I come here every time to look for my daily bread. I'm on that uh, nylon scrub. So I don't have any other thing that I'm doing except this uh, uh, scrub nylon that I'm doing. And Lagos is not alone. In the next decade, many of the world's largest cities will be located in Africa. Like Lagos, they struggle with poisonous air. On the streets, from vehicles spewing unregulated fumes. And even inside their homes. Generators are everywhere because the electricity supply is unreliable. When the lights go off, generators are turned on. If carbon monoxide is not properly ventilated out or is trapped in an enclosed space, if a human being should breathe that in for a while, it slowly poisons the blood system. Then there's the water. This fishing village is located in one of the city's biggest slums. Lagos bears an additional burden. It's the place old computers and smartphones come to die. Collected across the globe, they're stripped here of their valuable components, leaving behind a trail of powerfully toxic waste and devastating health problems. Basically what we do here, we recover resources from junks of electronic waste. They include the copper, the aluminium, the lead, the plastics and circuit board. More waste than can be handled safely, smack in the middle of a crowded megacity. Lagos should be thriving. It has universities and entrepreneurs and resources. But pollution sickens workers. It keeps ailing children home from school. It not only takes a toll on the economy, it takes a toll on lives. Now you see a lot of people breaking down from various illnesses caused by the stress of the environment. The air pollution, the water pollution, diseases that are related to this. When they come to the hospital, they spend hours, some spend days. When you add up all this, it begins to reduce the quality of life for that person. There is a movement to a better future, a new rapid bus system supported by the World Bank. It takes cars off the roads. When we make our public transport efficient for people to use, then we would be able to reduce the cost of transportation and make environment safer for people and for them to live better and live well. But more must be done. Mass transit, moving factories out of the cities, cleaner fuels, safe waste disposal. African cities are growing fast, so there's no time to waste.